Once more, brethren, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the eighth day of the month of February. The year is 2024. And God is calling us to his feet. Let us come to learn his word. Before we start, let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father Lord, help us learn your word. Help us study about it and we get to know you more. In your precious holy name I pray, amen. So the word of God is sufficient. That is our title today. As we see the Bible, there are some new books that have come up. And if we read other versions of the Bible, these new books contain them. We see books like Tobit, Susanna, Maccabeth, which we currently don't have in our Bible. We want to see how the origin of these books became into existence. Come follow me in the book of Proverbs. The chapter is 30 and the verse is 3, 5 to 6. And it says, Every word of God is pure. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Do not add to the word of God, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. So, have you heard of those versions, Susanna, Macbeth, Tobit, and these versions are called the books of Apocrypha, Judith, Wisdom of Solomon, and so on. We see that initially the Jews had rejected, never accepted these books in the Old Testament. So the Jews really were not approving these books. And that's why you see they were not really included. So there was a series of controversies found among us Christians in these books and the church too. But finally, in the first section of the Council of Trent on the 8th of April in, 19, in 1546, these books were later accepted and included among some versions of the Bible and among some beliefs. Now, there, was, there were some findings that are not or we don't really believe, which these Bibles, books of apocryphal contain. For example, we are seeing that in the book of Maccabees, he was going to play, pray for the dead. There is a note, Macbeth 12, the chapter, 2 Maccabees, the chapter is 12 and the verse is 46. It says, there is a note in this part that says that this passage bravely affirms the resurrection of the dead or the, exist, the existence of purgatory. That means the praying for the dead. The Catholic cover believe that when we pray for the dead, their souls will be made purified or made righteous. So Maccabees is seen and trying to practice the same habit. And a habit which most people or which most books of the Bible or which most beliefs don't really believe. That we don't really believe in the praying for the dead. Secondly, uh, there is a prayer for the righteous. Among them, Onias was a former high priest and he was commenting about Jeremiah. He was saying Jeremiah was a very good prophet of the Israels. And he was trying to say that Jeremiah offers many prayers for us as for the Jerusalem, the holy city. Here again, there is a revealing comment. The prayer granted to Jeremiah is the first proof of a belief 
in a prayer of righteous dead in favor for the living. He was trying to say that Jeremiah was praying for the dead such that they're righteous, they can be made righteous. Another wrong belief. So these books, we are not regarding them as accepted among the versions in our book simply because the doctrines they offer is against our doctrines. We don't believe in praying for the dead. We don't believe in praying for that dead in order to receive righteous. So that's why some of these books are not included in our versions. So there is false history among these books and there are contradictions in our beliefs. Secondly, they have historical errors and textual variants confirm. That textual variance confirms their lack of inspiration. So how their texts are written uh, provides a disproof whether they were really inspired from the word of God. So we find that some of our Bibles or our Bibles do not include these books simply because of the reasons. The doctrine is false. They have false historical facts and textual variants confirm their lack of inspiration. Now, this was a comment from Luther. He said, the church cannot give much more strength and authority to a book than it has in itself. It cannot give much more authority to a book than it has in itself. A council cannot make scripture what is not scripture. A church cannot make a scripture that is not confirmed to be a scripture. So that's why the books of Apocrypha are not included in our versions. No one should add or take away from the word of God. This word prevails overall. Historical contingencies of the people of God. Thus the psalmist says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. Let us thank God that his word endures forever. Brethren, the books of Apocrypha have contradicting messages to the messages of our church today. They confirm purgatory, the prayer, praying for the dead. They also confirm praying for the dead righteous in order to gain righteousness, which we don't confirm in our books. That's why in our versions, these books are not included. We've seen their origin was in 1947, 15, 1546. That is their origin before the Jews had rejected them. And we see they have got false historical facts. They don't have confirmation of inspiration from God. So let us know that the word of God is sufficient and it was inspired by his people. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everything. Let us know that your word is sufficient and it is used to inspire to inspire us. May you, we, may you, holy name, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.